there. It's Florence here and I'm back again today with another episode of my knitting video podcast. Before I get started, I should mention, if the audio of this video sounds different, it's because I have finally got my hands on a microphone. I'm not sure if this will mean an immediate increase in video quality or if things will be a little bit hit and miss for a while, but hopefully it will lead to an improvement in the long run at least. In these episodes, I tend to just show you what I'm wearing, which projects I've finished knitting recently, what I currently have in progress, and any new yarn that I have recently picked up, which today is quite a bit, so we do have a number of things to go through. As usual, I will begin with what I'm wearing. Today, I'm visibly wearing two pieces of knitwear, actually. On the outside, I'm wearing this cardigan. This is the April Cardigan by Petite Knit. It's one of the only patterns, if not the only pattern, that I've actually knitted twice. I had one in a mid-brown colour that I knitted, I don't know, quite a few years ago now, and I liked it so much that I went on to make this one probably a year and a bit ago. This is knitted in Knitting for Olive Merino and Silk Mohair, which is one of my favourite yarn combinations. It's really great. I think the merino is in the shade marzipan and the silk mohair is in the shade putty, although I'm not 100% sure about that. I knitted it pretty much exactly to pattern, apart from this does have a double knitted button band. I think I have an episode of this podcast from when I just finished knitting this cardigan, where I talk about it in a lot of detail, and I think I compare it to the other April cardigan that I knitted, which has the original button band in the pattern, which is a ribbed one. Anyway, I like this cardigan. I really recommend this pattern for anyone who's looking for more of a sort of fitted v-neck cardigan. It's really classic. It's a really well-fitting, well-thought-out knit. I really like the techniques that are used in the shoulder construction. I've used them in a lot of other projects since I first knitted this cardigan. It has this sort of um, slightly saddle shoulder-esque construction, which probably isn't going to show up well on camera given I'm wearing white on a white background, but it's good. I recommend it. The inner layer that I'm wearing is a camisole. Again, I'm not sure how much you can see. Perhaps you can see the top cable just here. This is the Twist Loop Top by Other Loops. It is one of my all-time favorite camisole patterns. I think it's really beautiful. It has a fit that's a little bit similar to the, what's it called? Camisole number no. five by My Favorite Things Knitwear, which I know is very popular, where it has a narrower cut close to the neck and then it comes out. It's a very um, 90s sort of style, which means that it becomes a little bit of a nightmare to figure out a bra setup for without your bra straps being visible. So I most frequently wear this top with this cardigan so that I can wear a regular bra and just not have the straps visible at all. I also really like how the colours match up. The yarn used for this camisole is from Drops. I think it's Drops Flora in the shade White Fog. I had it in stash for many, many years and eventually knitted it up to make this camisole. I definitely do not recommend Drops Flora for a camisole like this. For those of you who liked the colour, the colour is white fog, it is very pretty. Um, I do think that the wool that I used for this cardigan, the Knitting for Olive Merino in Marzipan, might be a great substitute which has a very similar colour to it. I personally love the Knitting for Olive Merino for camisoles like this, and uh, this one in Drops Flora is no good for summer weather, which is another reason it pairs really well with this cardigan. Like, it's definitely more of a winter camisole, because if I get too hot wearing it, I find the alpaca is both very warm and very itchy. Drops Flora, by the way, is 65% wool and 35% alpaca, and it is a super affordable yarn. To be clear, it's not that I don't recommend Drops Flora. If you're on a really tight budget, I do think it's one of the better yarns at that price point. It's just that it's not really suitable for a camisole, and so I would advise against using it for that. Anyway, I love this top pattern. I think it's really, really pretty. I'd love to re it one day with a more suitable yarn. Um, I recommended it to my sister, who I think is about to cast one on in the Knitting for Olive Merino in Clover Green. If you know that color, it's going to look really fun. And yes, I think I ended up with a two-piece set that I really like, so it, it all worked out okay in the end. I'm going to jump in with my first of two finished objects today. I will go for the big garment first, or do I go for the smaller piece first? Let's jump straight in with the big garment. I will, I will show you. I have this cardigan finished at last. This is the step-by-step -step cardigan. I think many of you probably found my channel through a tutorial I posted about a year and a half ago for the step-by-step -step sweater. The idea of that one is that it's a beginner-friendly raglan jumper tutorial where I show all of the steps involved, and I've had a lot of requests since to make a similar pattern for a cardigan. Um, I ended up doing a sock tutorial as well, and eventually I'm coming back to do the cardigan. So I've showed it in various states of unfinished over the last few episodes, 
And here it finally is, all done. You can probably see the most noticeable thing about this cardigan is the yarn that it's made of. I do have one here that's intact to show you. This yarn is Madara and it's from Noro. It is 60% wool, 30% silk and 10% alpaca. It has 200 meters per 100 grams. It comes in these 100 gram hanks. And it says that it has a 15 to 17 stitch gauge on 4.5 to 5 millimeter needles. This is a very interesting uneven yarn with a lot of thickness variation. Sometimes it's very thick and fluffy and not tightly spun. At other points it's very thin and feels a little bit more durable because it is spun together a little better. It also has a lot of colours in it. Perhaps you can see it better in the finished cardigan than in the hank. It has this grey brown base and then it has flecks of all different rainbow colours in it. It is really pretty. It's very unique. I like it as a sort of colourful yarn option given I generally prefer wearing very neutral colours. This yarn is pretty expensive. I think I paid about £20 for each hank and I did buy five. For this cardigan though, which is quite an oversized fit, I would say, I only used about three and a half maybe. So you should be fine with four if you're knitting a similar size to me. That still puts it at around an £80 project, which is a lot of money, but this yarn is definitely a bit of a showstopper. The gauge is basically the same as for the step-by-step -step sweater. So for that, I knitted my original sample in Drops Nepal, which is a super affordable yarn option. Um, I mentioned Drops Flora that I used for this camisole a minute ago. Drops Nepal is just the Aran weight, or like quite thick Aran weight version of the Drops Flora. So it's again, 65% wool and 35% alpaca. That's super affordable, like maybe two pounds per ball when it's on sale, and it often goes on sale. So if you want to knit this cardigan on a budget, I think that would work great. Drops Alaska would be an even cheaper option, that's 100% wool. But I really wanted to use something special because when I knit up a very plain garment like this, I think that it's nice to let the yarn do the talking. My most worn step-by-step -step sweater that I've knitted is one that I used Noro 10N for, which is really similar. It's also got a lot of color variation and a lot of texture variation, and I was really happy with how that turned out, so I did reach for a similar yarn this time around. I don't want to hit my mic cable, see I'm getting used to this, so it's a little hard to show things, but I'll show the cardigan as best I can. There's not really anything very exciting going on here, as you can see, it has a double knitted button band. I did do a poll on my stories when I was working on the pattern for this cardigan, where I asked whether people would like to see a um, V-neck or like a round neck, a crew neck cardigan, and whether they'd like to see one with a road button band or a double knitted button band. And V-neck with double knitted button band sort of overwhelmingly won. And so that's what I ended up doing. It's definitely a little bit less beginner friendly, but I think it is worth it because it gives a really polished professional finish that I like a lot and I think a lot of you guys also really enjoy. And I don't think it's too hard. Like by the time you've knitted the rest of the cardigan, you've got used to knitting, purling, increasing, decreasing, and I think you're pretty much ready to try a new technique, something like double knitting. You can see how pretty it looks. These buttons are not sponsored. I did buy them with my own money. However, for transparency, the company that makes the buttons is called Pigeon Wishes. They have an Etsy store and they sent me some buttons in the last episode. I did show them. They were very pretty. They were sent to me for free and they sent me two packs of the same design, neither of which matched any of my projects. But I liked the buttons enough that I hopped onto their Etsy store and ordered some extras on my own with my own money for this cardigan. So I did buy these buttons myself, but I was really prompted to do that by being sent some for free so I could see what they look like. Yeah, not sponsored. Um, this yarn I also purchased myself from my friend Valentina's yarn shop, which is called My Ivory Room. It's a lovely yarn shop. I would really strongly recommend it. I don't know if this color is still in stock, but there are some other pretty neutral shades that this yarn comes in as well with colorful flecks, so it might be worth taking a look. I don't think I mentioned, the color of this yarn is number one, which is called Sake. It's the most popular one, so it can be a little bit hard to find in stock. I waited, I think, upwards of a year to find this yarn in stock. So when it did appear, I bought it very quickly. I'm not entirely sure what to do with one and a half of these that I have left. I was thinking maybe um, a hat or something. Hat and mittens, maybe? I do have quite a lot, maybe 300 meters or so. So I could definitely knit something like that. This yarn is actually really soft. 
The Nori yarn that I've used in the past can at times be a little scratchy. I think it often has mohair in, which doesn't exactly help the softness. But this one, especially once it's blocked, and it is absolutely transformed by blocking. It really fluffs up, fills in any gaps in the fabric, looks really beautiful after blocking. And it becomes much softer as well. So I think that this is a, a good Nori yarn to go for if you're a little bit concerned about how scratchy some of them are. The flip side of that um, is, I did mention in the last video, but I've been having more problems with it since then. I have had a really hard time binding off with this yarn. My go-to bind off when I'm knitting is an Italian bind off. Um, I think bind offs are often named pretty interchangeably. I believe, and I might be wrong about this, I heard somebody saying that in some languages, um, especially like Scandinavian, like Nordic languages, which are the original languages for a lot of patterns that I knit, that it's not uh, super clear, like there's not a direct translation between the different types of bind off. And so the translations in English can be pretty inconsistent. What I'm calling an Italian bind off is like a tubular bind off, but without the two rows or have many of double knitting that you do before you would do the sewn part of the tubular bind off. So just going in directly once you finish knitting your ribbing and doing a sewn bind off. That's what I pretty much always do. I don't like the tubular bind off in particular. I find that the double knitting makes that finished edge less stretchy and I don't really have a problem with my bind offs flaring out. And I think the Italian bind off looks just neat enough on its own. Anyway, I always do a sewn bind off. Whether you want to do tubular or Italian, this is going to apply. This yarn does not hold up well to being pulled through like loops of other yarn. So you think if you're doing a sewn bind off, you're pulling the needle through each stitch several times. Multiply that by all of the stitches that you want to bind off. And that yarn is going to be experiencing a lot of like tension and friction you know, like the tail that you have threaded through your needle while you're doing the bind off. And this yarn I found just pulled apart and broke. So as I was doing the bind off, I was constantly like splicing broken ends back together to be able to continue. Or um, even if it hadn't broken yet, I would get some water on my hands and like felt that yarn to try and stick the fibers together better so that they wouldn't pull apart as much and it was less likely to break. I think I was having to splice the ends together like several times to be able to complete the bind off. Um, even the cuff, which isn't a very long bind off, I ended up breaking the yarn while binding off. It was definitely a little bit tedious. It's nothing that you couldn't get around, like I'm not too bothered by it. It's not like the majority of the knitting process is binding off, and for the most part I really did enjoy knitting with this yarn. But it's something to consider if that would be something that really bothers you. Oh, and obligatory, I think if you're holding it with mohair, which a lot of people do with this yarn, you wouldn't have any problems at all because the mohair's going to stop it from pulling apart, you know? But yes, I actually really enjoyed knitting with just one strand of this. It kept the price not low, but like much lower than it would be if I included mohair, which would make it like a £150 project probably. And now that I've got through the bind off, I'm really satisfied with the result. I will do a little bit of a close up for you. Hopefully you can see the fabric, the colors, that double knitted button band. And I'm not sure if you can see the buttons. The fabric is obviously like gray with these colorful flecks. And so the buttons I went for are black with colorful flecks. I don't know if it shows up at all or if you can just see the reflection of my PC screen. Can you see my like PC screen saver is the field from Howl's Moving Castle. <laughs> anyway, they're really cute buttons. I did ask last time I finished a cardigan whether you thought that I should colour in the yarn that I used to sew on the buttons, like this part here, with a marker to make it black so that it blends in better with the button. And you guys said no, 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 like leave it the light beige colour. I am weighing up doing that again and this time I think I will do it, like I will not take your advice. I think I will whip out like a Copic marker and colour this yarn in to make it blend better into the buttons. I just, you know, think that would be nice. It would give it more of a clean look. Since there's already so much going on with the yarn and the colorful details on the buttons, I think having the yarn used to sew the buttons on, blend into the buttons, would look really nice. Maybe I'll like wear this cardigan in the next video and show you how it ended up looking. See, sometimes I take your advice, but not always. In terms of a pattern release schedule for this, I do plan for this to be probably a free pattern or potentially I'll do it like I did with the lace socks where it's a pay what you want pattern. So it's listed for some price, but you can also get it for 50% off or 100% off depending on how much you want to pay for it. 
I have filmed a tutorial for this cardigan, which is why it took so long. The actual knitting was really fast. It would probably be a project I could finish within a week, but I kept having to wait for daylight hours to be able to film like tutorial clips for it. And so this has been going on for a long time, but I have filmed those clips. Hopefully they're all safe on my PC now and I will be editing that video. I haven't yet started writing up the pattern neatly, so I'm not going to do a call for testers right yet, but I will let you know in a future video if there is a call for testers. And then hopefully I will be able to release this pattern in probably a couple of months. So yeah, sorry for the delay with that. Hopefully it will be worthwhile. That's the step-by-step -step cardigan. This is perhaps a slightly less exciting finished object because when I showed it in the last video, it was in a fairly close to finished state. This is the chunky brioche scarf. Is it called the chunky brioche scarf? I hope I'm getting the name right. This is by Garnog Slicked, um, who is a Norwegian designer who I've tested for quite a few times before. I feel like I covered this scarf pretty thoroughly in the last episode. I will try to show it to you. It's very long, so kind of hard to show. You can see it has these sort of ends that taper off to a point, but it's fairly wide sort of in the middle and it has a rotationally symmetric shape that I think is really cool. Now I have knitted a scarf before. Interestingly, it took me quite a few years of knitting before I knitted my first scarf because I find the process to be very boring and very tedious. I do have on my Ravelry a free scarf pattern for that scarf that I eventually knitted, which is a scarf which I really enjoy the finished object of, but the process of knitting it, I did find to be quite boring. I will warn you about that if you do want to, you know, get this pattern for free and follow it. But this one, on the other hand, this scarf was a really fast and really fun knit. And I think that's really valuable. You know, I always advise against beginners doing scarves. I find them so boring. This one, I think you could easily knit up within a week in the evenings. It's knitted on huge needles. I want to say seven millimeter needles and it is in brioche, but it doesn't feel like it takes too long. I know a lot of people dislike brioche because to create one, one V on the stockinette fabric, one row of Vs, you have to do two rows. But actually I didn't feel like it was dragging at all. It has um, decreases or increases every, is it 16 rows? Something like that, I don't know. Probably best I don't know, so I'm not like giving the pattern away. Um, but there are these regular increases and decreases which allow you to see how much progress you're making. You know, when you're knitting a, like a stockinette tube, a stockinette tube this long and a stockinette tube this long don't <laughs> look very different, but they still take several hours of work to move between. So it can be very unmotivating. Whereas here you can see you've done a new like increase section and you can see that you're progressing. And there's the really satisfying halfway point where you stop increasing and you start decreasing again. And I don't know, I just found it to be a really enjoyable and addictive knit. I have made the bigger size. I think it's supposed to be 190 centimeters. I have lost my tape measure, so I can neither confirm nor deny that my one measures 190 centimeters, but it certainly is believable that it might. This is pretty long. I think it's longer than I am tall. So that kind of backs that up. And what I mentioned in the last episode that's really cool is that this is knitted with Izzy yarn. Oh yeah, I should probably have mentioned when I started talking about this, but now I'm talking about the yarn, I will make sure I mention. This yarn was sponsored. It was sent to me just for the test knit, not because I'm an influencer and I'm going to talk about it on YouTube or anything, just because all of the test knitters for this scarf got the yarn for free. So yeah, I was sent this yarn by Izzy. I got the Izzy Alpaca 3 in the color E2S to knit this. And this whole giant scarf takes only three balls of Izzia Alpaca 3. Actually a kind of general thing, I don't know how interested you guys are in how much yarn for my projects costs. I'm kind of curious as to whether that would be something that you'd like me to mention more in the videos, like calculate the cost of working on each project, whether that's the kind of transparency people enjoy or whether it feels unnecessary. I'll do it for this scarf though. Obviously I did not pay for the yarn, I was sent it, but I will check how much one ball costs. Okay, so in my local yarn shop that is just down the road from me, you can buy one ball of Alpaca 3 for £7.50. Three times that is £22.50. That is super affordable. Actually, the smaller size of this scarf, I think uses only two balls of Alpaca 3. So you can knit the whole scarf for £15. So it's fast, it doesn't use very much yarn. It's a great opportunity to try out Izzy yarn, which I know can be very expensive if you want to knit a whole jumper or scarf or something like that from it. I think it would be a really, really good gift knit if you know somebody who'd like the style of this. 
Once again, I would try this on right now, but I feel like it's going to hit my microphone <laughs> and I'm not really used to the microphone yet, so I won't. I'll try and put a picture in of myself wearing it so you can see what it looks like when I am wearing it. It's a really lovely scarf. I'm super happy with how it turned out. And yeah, I've knitted a bunch of patterns by Garnox Licht. They're well written. They're easy to follow. I don't think there was anything in this pattern that required me to look up a tutorial online, which is something that I often do when I'm knitting with slightly unfamiliar techniques. Like brioche I knit infrequently enough that I always forget how to do increases and decreases and stuff by the time I get to a new brioche project. But I found that they were worded well enough in the pattern that I could learn them with the pattern instructions alone, if that makes any sense. So that's cool. Um, I would really recommend it. Okay, so those are my two finished objects. How many things do I have in progress? I have maybe three work in progress pieces that I'll show you today. I'll start with the one that you've already seen. This is the zipper sweater light man, I think it's called. A lot of words there. It is the DK weight men's version of the petite knit zipper sweater. This is a super popular pattern. I've mentioned in the previous episodes that I have knitted this before. I've knitted the sort of chunky weight version of the men's zipper sweater before for my boyfriend, maybe like two years ago, quite a while ago. I really enjoyed knitting it. It was a very quick knit and the result was really nice. I asked my boyfriend this time if he wants to appear in my video. He said only if his face is cropped out because he wants to be the anonymous boyfriend. Anyway, the finished jumper looks really good. It's very thick and he doesn't wear it very frequently because he says that it's not cold enough to wear it. And so he asked me if I would knit the DK weight version when it was released so that he could have one that he can reach for more frequently. So he picked the color, he wanted a light gray. This is kind of a Christmas present for him. Not his only Christmas present, <laughs> but I do want to have this done by Christmas. I got him some uh, running shoes, the A6 Magic Speed 3. So if this isn't done by Christmas, it's not like he's going without a gift. This is what it's currently looking like. So I have split body and sleeves. It feels so much better now that I'm missing in the round. It was definitely a little bit of a pain to knit flats and I've been missing a lot of cardigans lately. Now it's just very mindless stockinette for absolutely miles, which is quite a nice work in progress to have, something that I can pick up if I'm watching a movie or otherwise doing something that requires quite a bit of concentration. I speak so much when I show this on this channel about the yarn combination and how much I like it. I love this yarn combination. The more I knit with it, the more I enjoy it. It just feels so good. This is not sponsored. I purchased all of this yarn myself. This is Loch Lomond from BC Garn. The color is number six. It is, I would say, a lighter DK weight. It claims that it's an 18 stitch gauge, but I just don't believe that for a second. It is 150 meters per 50 grams. So that's quite a lot of yardage for a DK, I would say. And then I'm holding it with this. This is Alpaca One from Izia. I think the color of this is E3S. So it's definitely a slightly darker gray than this one, which is E2S that I use for the scarf. This is a lace weight, 100% Alpaca. I think it's 400 meters per 50 grams. So you get a lot of yardage with this one. And held together, they make a really soft and quite dense fabric when knitted up to a DK gauge. My boyfriend's a little bit sensitive to wool. He has tried this jumper on. As I said, I've lost my measuring tape so I couldn't check that it was turning out the right size. So I like put it onto a spare cord and made him try it on. And he really likes the fabric as well, which is good. I'm just gonna keep on going with this. I do like to have some other projects going that are a bit more interesting. So I'll show you my other more interesting work in progress pieces in a second, but I am enjoying just working on this. It's a pleasure to knit and I look forward to gifting it. I always said I'm not really a gift knitter, but lately I've been really wanting to knit people gifts for some reason. I think part of it is like during my earlier days knitting, I wanted to have a wardrobe full of amazing jumpers. So I was working really hard to churn out jumper after jumper so that I had a bunch of them to wear. Now that I own more jumpers than any human needs to own, I think I can knit a little bit more for the process, which means I can knit more time consuming pieces and I can knit more pieces as gifts. And that feels really good. And I think that's why I've transitioned from being not really a gift knitter to, you know, a little bit more of a gift knitter recently. So talking of that, let's see if I can reach without ripping out my microphone cable. This was not the furthest away object. <laughs> there are more that I have to reach for later that are further out. So this is going to be fun. 
I showed some yarn that I got in the last video. I bought it to knit a Christmas present for my mum um, and I will show it again. This is Wool Local Aran by Erica Knight. I don't remember the colour names but I will put them here for you. This is a really dark greeny blue and this is just a classic cream and they are supposedly Aran weight but it's definitely a light Aran weight. Maybe a worsted weight but I'm following a pattern that's supposed to be for DK and it's working pretty much fine. I said in the last video that I wanted to knit my mum a pair of gloves and I wanted to choose some yarn that I think she'd really like. She is very environmentally conscious and so I thought she'd really enjoy this uh, Erica Knight Wool Local Aran because I think it's all uh, produced within 50 miles so like the wool is sourced, spun and dyed all within 50 miles. I think it's in Yorkshire. It's pretty expensive so for this project which is a pair of colour white mittens that she asked for I bought obviously two hanks because I needed one of each colour. I think I will have quite a bit left over like I didn't necessarily need that much but I paid about £17 each for them I think so it was like a £35 project. Anyway I have finished the first mitten. I think this pattern is called Marit and it is by Skeinda Knits and this is what it looks like. I flip it I haven't woven in any ends evidently but this is what the uh, palm side of the mitten looks like. I love this like a flower on the thumb. This thing looks huge. When I put it on I think it feels kind of good. Like for me my fingers go almost to the end. I have very large hands. I don't know how large my mom's hands are. Probably not too different to mine so I think it will fit her quite well. I have been loving knitting these. I knit English style. I am not a particularly quick knitter. I think a lot of people think that I'm a very fast knitter because I knit a lot of items but that's just because I knit for a lot of hours not because my actual stitches per minute is especially high. Colour work in particular is a huge pain for me because obviously if you're knitting English style you can't hold the two strands of yarn at once so you have to drop one pick up the other to knit the next stitch and especially for colour work like this where you have a lot of almost alternating stitches in your main and contrast colours it can make knitting colour work very very slow. So for a long time now I have been knitting colour work two-handed which means I hold one strand of yarn continental with my left hand and I hold one strand of yarn with my right hand and knit English. This works okay. I'm not a particularly proficient continental knitter like I don't ever knit anything other than colour work continental. The only time I ever knit continental is for two-handed colour work and so I have some trouble getting the tension just right but for these gloves I really thought it was going to be a disaster. I thought they were going to be all lumpy, my floats would be pulled tight, you know, I just I thought, I thought it would be a pain. But actually once I blocked them out they look so good, they look so smooth. The only mistake or part that doesn't look so great is if you look on just the side of the thumb here you'll see there are a couple of bits of white visible that shouldn't be there. This is from where I caught my floats and I think I didn't pull the yarn tight enough. So I think this can probably be resolved by like going inside the thumb and just fiddling with the yarn to make the contrast colour less visible from the back where I caught the floats. And I'm going to have to go inside these mittens anyway to weave the ends in so it's not really too much extra effort. I just find these are so addictive to knit like because every row is different you're always checking the pattern, getting all excited to do something different on the next round. The thumbs are a little bit fiddly but that's kind of it. I like these gloves so much that I really want to make myself a pair and I will talk more about that later. On the yarn I really like it. It smells a tiny bit like sheep but only a little tiny bit and it's fairly soft given the fact it's sort of British 100% wool, not merino or anything. I don't think I would find it scratchy even worn against my neck. I would say it's probably softer than the Sadness Garn Pig Gint. That's, you know, a yarn that's pretty commonly found so I'm sure many of you have tried it and it's a good point of reference. I really like it. Obviously it's very expensive but I'm not too bothered like spending that money on it. I think it's worth it. I'm very aware of the fact that whether I decided to or not my channel does have quite a bit of influence. I get a decent number of views on my vlogs and so part of it is I feel a personal responsibility to try and use yarn with fewer air miles you know because I watch a lot of youtubers a lot of knitting youtubers who are across the Atlantic from me or in mainland Europe 
and a lot of them use yarn from their local countries and then I want to use the same yarn but that same yarn isn't local to me and I just feel like it would be better if I tried to use more British yarn both to reduce the air miles of my knitting since I do so much of it but also because I think it's good to promote and support local businesses to me and so I think it's really cool to try some British yarn that is not something I do particularly often and I found this to be just a joy to knit with it's very smooth, very even. The color work looks great. I think it is really good for a color work project. This is the Aran one. It also comes in a fingering weight, which excitingly, I will be able to show you in a little bit. So I've done the first mitten. I've done the cuff of the second mitten. Honestly, you can knit one of these up in a couple of evenings. They're really fast. I was expecting them to take longer than that, but I think I can kind of feel myself improving at two-handed colour work and that's really cool and it's making me want to knit more colour work to get better at it. I have a couple of Erika Tokai books which have some stranded colour work patterns and then they're mostly in Tarsia I think but there are some stranded colour work patterns too and I'm really tempted to try out some of those. They will be fun given the fact they are very much not in English and my Japanese is poor, really poor, but maybe that will be something I try soon. I do have one other project currently in progress. Let's see. Now I mentioned that I was really enjoying having all of that stockinette to work on, on the zipper, sweater, light, man, but that sometimes I want something a little bit more complex, something that requires some thought and concentration and is a little bit more interesting to knit. I don't have a lot to show. This is a very fresh cast on. I just have the back of the neck here. And before I get too far into talking about this, I should say that this yarn is sponsored. This was gifted to me by Valentina of the yarn shop My Ivory Room. She has a lot of lovely yarn in her shop that I get very excited about. I have spent a slightly concerning amount of money there and she gifts me yarn from time to time as well. It's probably my favorite yarn shop. I go to London to visit it specifically on a fairly regular basis. And last time I went to London, I picked this out and she gifted it to me for free just to use um, and show in my videos. This yarn is from Gepard, which I think they do really nice yarn. Everything I've tried from Gepard, I really liked, but it's not super widely available in the UK. This is Kid Setter and Puralana. Uh, I'm talking a little bit about the Kid Setter first. This to me feels like a really standard silk mohair. It's I think a fairly similar price point to something like the Knitting for Olive silk mohair or the Izzia silk mohair. And I would say that this feels pretty similar to it. So, you know, you could use this, you could use that fairly interchangeably. Um, this is nice, I like it, but it's no different to other mohairs I've used. With that being said, at least this color is really unique and I really like it. And I think it's quite nice to have an extra brand you can go to to find more colors, um, to find more things in stock, whatever. The color of this one is 104. They have color names, but I don't know what this one is. It doesn't say it on the packaging, but there are color names listed online and you get 210 meters in this. So it's about the same as all the other silk mohairs I've tried. The Puralana though, I actually am super impressed with. It's a 50% wool and 50% alpaca blend, which I quite like. I've mentioned before that I can be quite sensitive to alpaca at times, but this doesn't feel like it's going to give me much trouble. It's very soft, um, but I don't find it's too drapey. The wool in it means it holds its shape, the wool content means it seems to hold its shape a lot better than 100% alpaca would do while still having a bit of that 100% alpaca type softness if you know what I mean. I really like it. It's a DK weight so it's super versatile and I'll give you some details. This color is 106. I believe this is called Rose Grey which is a really great name for it and you get 115 meters per 50 grams which I think is quite standard for a DK. Both of these are a really unique color, which is like gray, but it's definitely a purple gray, like it's a violet gray. It's really unique and it's not something that I have in my wardrobe already, but it doesn't go too far outside of my comfort zone either. So I think it's really cool. I wasn't really sure what to knit. So I was looking through the pattern libraries with some designers that I like. I love this top, as I mentioned before, the twist loop top by Other Loops. And so I thought I'd take a look at the other patterns by Other Loops because I've never knitted any of them, but they always come up on my Instagram feed and they always look really pretty. So I was looking through the patterns. I wanted one that I could knit from yarn and stash. And I came across one for what is called the waffle loop sweater, I think. And I will make sure to put a picture of it here so you can see it, given I have not got very far through this. And so you probably can't tell from 
this video what it's going to look like. It is a really interesting cable jumper that just has a simple waffle textured stitch over quite a lot of it, and then a sort of cable panel in the front that stops mid-chest. I think it looks really cool. It has a construction that I'm very familiar with, so it's top down, you knit the back panel, I think you, I haven't actually read through the pattern, but I assume you'll pick up stitches along the shoulders to knit the front and join under the arms and around from there. And obviously there's a lot going on because you're always at the very least doing this waffle stitch and then later on there'll be cables to enjoy as well. When I looked at it, I saw that the yarn suggestion was for Gepard Perulana and I was like, perfect, I have some of that that I've been really wanting to use. I really thought that this color would be nice for a cardigan actually, but I've knitted so many cardigans lately, I'm quite happy to be using it for a jumper instead. Anyway, I really would like to wear this jumper on Christmas, so I'm going to do my best to knit quickly and get it done so that I can wear it on Christmas Day. We'll see whether that ends up happening. Today is December 2nd, 3rd? December 3rd, so I need to get going. I have like three weeks. I've actually booked a whole bunch of annual leave from work, so from mid-December I won't be working and so I'll be able to knit a lot. And hopefully this is a project that I'll be able to make a lot of progress on. Okay, so those are my work in progress pieces, and I will now grab the new yarn that I've picked up recently, because there's quite a bit. I've got yarn for quite a few new projects, but they're mostly accessories, so it's mostly in pretty small quantities. I'll start off with the one that I bought first. So, I don't know if these are familiar to any of you. I knitted these around this time last year, I think. They are called the Mountain Walk Gloves, so if you've seen my Mountain Walk Socks, and my Mountain Walk Socks Chunky, which I'm wearing today, um, this uses the same kind of mock cable pattern, but it is a fingerless glove. I knitted these as a gift for my mum for Christmas last year, so she's asked me for gloves two years in a row. And so obviously I handed these over to her last year, I think they've been worn quite a bit and I haven't seen them in a while, but I asked her recently if she could bring them over the next time she visited me so that I could take a look at them again, because this is the one thing that I've knitted that I constantly get messages about asking when I'll be releasing a pattern. I haven't yet. I was hoping I'd have one ready for Christmas this year, but I now realize I will not. Um, but they will hopefully be coming this winter. I knitted these in not a super smart way, so I want to make some changes to how they're constructed, and uh, I will be knitting up another pair to figure that out before I start writing up a pattern. And so I went ahead and I picked up some yarn to knit myself a pair of these gloves um, so that my mom can have this pair returned to her, and so that I can write up a pattern for them. These are knitted in Cardiff Cashmere Classic. It's a DK weight. It's a sport weight, really. It's quite thin. The color, I don't know how you pronounce it, really. I think it's called Mose or Mose. And it's this very pretty pastel mint green color. For mine, I've gone for a classic and boring brown. I also thought I would try a different yarn. So this isn't Cardiff Cashmere. This is Lang Yarns Cashmere Premium. Color is... Well, it says color and then 78.0022. I'm going to guess it's color 22, but I don't know. All the yarn names and color numbers, etc., will be in the description. So you can always check there because sometimes I do get things wrong in the video. If I do get something wrong, I do try to put a note on screen in the video as well. But yeah, you can always check the description to find out what exactly all of these are. This is a really neutral brown. I think it's quite a grayish brown, not so saturated. It reminds me a lot of the color from Cardiff Cashmere. I think it's just called brown, <laughs> but it's similarly this sort of grayish mid-brown. So if you like this color, you could try that one instead if it's more easily available. I think these yarns are quite similar in terms of price point. They're about 15 pounds a ball. Maybe this one's like 16 or something, slightly more. This is definitely 15 pounds a ball in general. You can sometimes get them on a little bit of a sale, um, but it is a cashmere glove. It is going to be a little bit of a more expensive project. You can get two quite short gloves out of a single ball of Cardiff cashmere, I find. Not this pattern in particular, but like maybe the petite knit penny gloves or something. But I always like to buy two to be on the safe side now that my hobby brings me enough money to cover its costs. So yeah, this is a little bit of a pricey project, but the yarn is really nice. This yarn looks pretty indistinguishable from the Cardiff cashmere, I think. Like it has a really similar texture. It looks like it's spun in quite a similar way. I'd say that these two are pretty much interchangeable. I think I did buy some of this like a year ago to knit up a second pair of these, and I never did. When I ordered it, I think it looked gray in the picture, so I bought it and then it arrived and it was not gray, it was white. And 
I realized that that was going to be super impractical and so I never knitted them. So we're going to do it in brown and I will come up with something else to do with two balls of white cashmere. I will cast these on pretty soon. I remember them being really quite a quick knit. And yeah, hopefully I will end up doing a call for testers, uh, probably just five testers or something, four testers, this pair of gloves, fairly soon. So for those of you who've been asking me for a year, I promise the pattern will be coming soon. Oh, this yarn is bought with my own money. So I showed you those mittens a few minutes ago, the ones that I'm knitting for my mum, and I did say I am really enjoying knitting them. And so I'm both really enjoying the process of knitting colour white mittens, and I'm also really enjoying the yarn. And so that's prompted two separate purchases. I'll go for this one first. I mentioned in the last video where I showed the Erica Knight Wool Local Aran that I got for the mittens originally, that I really like the look of the fingering weight colour white mittens, and I would really like to make a pair, but that I was quite stressed about finishing them before Christmas, basically because I am uh, not a very quick colour white knitter. But I said that at some point in the future I might like to make them, and I showed one pair then. I have a few different patterns for fingering white colour white mittens, saved to my Ravelry favourites actually, and I really do want to make some, and so I picked up some yarn for that. I went with Knitting for Olive. I think this will work fine for colour work. It's not as grippy as wool would be, but it doesn't really need to be. And I really, really like the colours that Knitting for Olive yarn comes in. This is just a yarn that I'm super familiar with. And I also quite like having a little bit left over because I'm collecting a lot of similar blue, green, beige Knitting for Olive scraps, all of exactly the same yarn in different colours. And I think that will make for a really fun scrappy project at some point. Anyway, uh, I bought these two, first of all. For this yarn, I really envisioned making, I'll put a picture of it here, I think they're called the Kyoto Mittens. I don't remember the designer name, but that will also be here. These have definitely a slightly different construction to the mittens that I knitted before. They're a little bit less of a traditional looking Norwegian, Scandinavian colour white mitten. I feel like I need to find out more about the history of this sort of knitting as well, actually. Anyway, the colours that I went for are ice blue for this lighter one, and then dusty petroleum blue for this darker one. I wasn't sure how well these would go together. This one is a very clear, saturated sort of blue, whereas this one is a lot more muted, but I think they actually look really nice together. I bought these in person at my local yarn shop, which is, well, the one that I bought this yarn at is the Oxford Yarn Store. I have another local yarn shop that we will get to in a second. And I just bought one ball of each colour because I think that would be enough for a pair of mittens. And then I'll put a picture up and again put up the pattern name and designer name for the mittens that I showed in the last video. These were the original pair that I was like, I really want to make these. And so I also got yarn for that. So I have enough for two pairs of colour white mittens. Maybe that's too optimistic. But as I said, I will, I'm sure, end up using this yarn anyway. I'm not confident that these are going to be high contrast enough, but I hope they will be. The colours are Dusty Olive for this darker green and fennel seed for this lighter green. Fennel seed might be a familiar colour because I have knitted a lot of stuff in the colour fennel seed from Knitting for Olive. I'm really a huge fan of this yarn. Hopefully these will look really cute. Um, I think they will pair really well, these colours, with the more organic floral pattern on that other pair of mittens. And so I hope that maybe after Christmas I can cast one of those pairs on and become a little bit more competent in my colour white knitting using these mittens as a form of practice. I've never knitted mittens before, like I've knitted fingerless gloves, but never mittens. I was so tempted when I went into the Oxford Yarn Store, they had the book Handcraft by Marianne Izzia, I think that's who it's by anyway, and it's just a book full of like gloves and mittens, and I was really tempted, it's a very beautiful book. Unfortunately it's quite expensive and it's also quite a small book, so I passed on it, but I'm still thinking about it. Also, a lot of the gloves in that book have fingers, and I am not sure I have the patience <laughs> to knit gloves with fingers right yet. I don't know, a few months ago I probably said I wouldn't have the patience to attempt mittens with colour work at fingering weight gauge on like 2.25mm needles, but here we are, so maybe gloves with fingers will be the next thing. Then, as I said, I also really liked the wool that I used for those mittens. I went into another local yarn shop in Oxford called The Wool Hound that I've mentioned a few times as well. I went in a couple of months ago and I saw a yarn that I really wanted and I took it to the counter and asked if they had a sweater quantity and the lady who was lovely, I'm not sure her name, was like, no. Um, but she sent me a message on Instagram a few days ago saying, we have that yarn in and a full sweater quantity now if you want to come get some. And so I went back in and I had a look. 
This is the Erica Knight wool local, not the Aran version. This is the fingering weight version. So this is 100% wool, fingering weight, 450 meters per 100 grams. Um, it says a 28 stitch gauge. It says on the packaging, Wool Local is an intimate blend of blueface Leicester and hard-wearing Masham produced from fleece to yarn in less than 50 miles. Starting at the British Wool Auction in Bradford, the wool is scoured, combed, spun, dyed, steamed and handed in the county of Yorkshire. So yeah, same for this as for the Aran version. I have gone for the colour Gritstone Flax, so this is the beige. I felt so silly when I went in and they told me that they didn't have a sweater quantity of this before. The grey version, like the light grey, is so, so similar. They're almost indistinguishable. And yet I was adamant, like it had to be gripstone flax. Like the beige really spoke to me. And for some reason, the grey just didn't excite me in the same way. This is again, expensive. I, this is slightly less per skein than the Aran weight version, I think. This is 16 pounds 50 in my local yarn shop. When I went in then, my plan for this was maybe to knit myself a DK weight zipper sweater, but by the time I finished that one, the men's size one, I think I might be feeling tired of that pattern. So I was having a think about what else I might like to knit. I know that I knit a lot of petite knit patterns, but that's truly just because I have a really high success rate with them. Like I often find myself totally loving them. I wore my Celeste sweater around the yarn shops when I was shopping for this stuff yesterday and I got so many compliments from people like they always turn out really well and so I wanted a striped jumper I've been wanting a striped jumper for a bit I don't really have very many and I was looking at the petite knit Leon sweater which I think is made with two strands of Sandus Gun double Sunday. no I'm talking rubbish of Sandus Gun Sunday. so it is DK weight and it's a very different type of yarn it's a very smooth merino non-superwash but I think it might work well for this I will obviously have to swatch, check that I like how it looks, maybe do some like dodgy maths to try and figure out which size to knit if my gauge isn't quite right. But I really thought this might be nice for a striped jumper. And so I got some of this as well. This color is Kathy Dark Gray. It's a little bit of a brownish dark gray though. So I think these two do look really nice together. I bought four of this one, the Gritstone Flax, and two of this one, Kathy Dark Grey. This was established through very sketchy mental maths while I was like standing in the yarn shop, so maybe that's not the correct amount for the Leon sweater, but I'm hoping it is. I don't know, maybe I'll end up using this for something else, but the Leon sweater I think is a good like reserve because I know I'd wear it a lot, and I'm actually really interested in the shoulder construction on it as well. I think it's a little different to other jumpers I've tried, so yeah, I'm interested to give it a go. So doing the math, 16 pounds 50 times six of these hanks. See, I'm pretty sure I could get a jumper out of five of them, no problem, but because of the stripes, I've ended up having to buy six. That is 99 pounds, 99 pounds. So it's not into the three digits yet, which is good, but it is a lot of money. Still, I think it's nice to support British yarn brands um, and use some British wool. And so as a one-off, I'm willing to pay that amount for a really nice jumper. I'll try and take my time knitting it a little bit so uh, I really get to enjoy the process. And this yarn is really nice. Like I've knitted the mitten with it. I know that I really love it. I've been waiting two months for it to come into stock and I finally have my hands on it. This isn't going to be cast on imminently. Um, it will be something that I start working on sometime in the future. So yeah, I'm very excited about that. We'll see if this jumper comes together anytime soon. We are still not quite done. I have one more thing to show. I said in the last video that I'm not a big gift knitter. I am obviously gift knitting for my boyfriend and for my mum, and I really felt like I should gift knit something for my dad. I never really knit anything for my dad, and it's a shame because he is someone who looks after his clothes really well. He really likes wool clothes. Like he's the kind of person who I think would really appreciate a hand knit. I'm just not as confident knitting for men as for women, I think. Um, and so I thought, since I'm enjoying the other gift knits I'm working on, I think in particular, something to note is like when I gift knit, I sometimes knit things that I wouldn't otherwise knit for myself. And I quite enjoy the experience. So for example, I probably wouldn't have <laughs> dived headfirst into color white mittens of my own accord. Um, but since my mom asked for a pair, I have started knitting one and I'm totally loving it. And so I kind of felt like it would be fun to gift knit something for my dad. So I sent a message to my mom. I asked what my dad might want. She said, knit him socks. He'd want socks which yeah, uh, I think you probably would. And so I'm feeling a lot of freedom to do sock things that I wouldn't normally do for myself. 
That means vanilla socks. I've never knitted a pair of vanilla socks. I don't know how many pairs of socks I have. I wanna say like 25-ish, maybe not quite that many, 20. And they're all cables or lace, basically. And obviously, you know, if I'm knitting a vanilla sock and I want to stay motivated, I wanted to pick a fun yarn. And so I bought one of these. This might be familiar to some of you. This is the Crazy Zauber Ball. Maybe you can see better if I hold it here. I think a lot of people use it as a sort of dupe for, is it called spin cycle? It's an American thing, I think. So we don't really have it so much over here, but it's one of those yarns where there's like two different colors applied together and it's also variegated. And it has a really long color change. I've used this before to knit a pair of gloves for my sister for Christmas or birthday, maybe birthday last year. Uh, it's a yarn that I don't use for myself because it's not something that I love the look of for myself but I really enjoy knitting with it and I've bought it as gifts for people. I've knitted gifts for people with it. Uh, I like it a lot. I think it's a pretty standard wool nylon blend sock yarn, which is my favorite type. And I really like this one. I took the labels off them because I'm a bit funny about labels. Like I don't like labels. They make me feel slightly uncomfortable. Um, but I took a photo of them first. So I can tell you this is Farbe, that's color, right? In German. <laughs> 2427, it says Fernlager. I don't know if that's the color, but it's a really like muted combination of blues and grays and a little bit of almost a yellowy green. I think it's beautiful. Like if I knitted myself socks with this one, I think I would probably still wear them, but I wasn't sure how the color changes would look if I knitted the toes and heels with this yarn. Like when you know when you knit a, a heel, either with a short row heel or with a heel flap and gusset actually, it kind of disrupts the frequency of the color changes and when you're decreasing for the toe or whatever, I guess it's not so significant with such a long color change as this, but because the number of stitches in the round is changing, um, the speed at which the colors change will change as well. So for this sort of color change yarn, I thought it might be nice to grab just a plain coordinating sock yarn to do toes and heels. I think that these go really well together. This I've actually never used for a sock, which is crazy. This is Drops Fable. Um, again, it's a plain wool nylon blend. It's color number 115, which is the mid gray. This is like the cheapest sock yarn out there, I think. It goes on sale for like maybe a pound, a pound 50 per ball really frequently. So it's like dirt cheap. And I have never knitted a pair of socks in it, even though I think I would really like it. It's that sort of not too scratchy, but still sturdy wool nylon blend that is my favorite for socks. It comes in quite a few funky self-striping or self-patterning colorways, I think, but it also comes in loads of plain neutrals like this. And I think these two will look really good together. I am like so unfamiliar with how to knit a man's sock. I've never gifted a pair of socks to anybody before. Um, I've only ever made socks for myself. That's crazy, I've knitted that many socks and I've never knitted any in stockinette or any as gifts. The sizing I'm not super worried about is that I think I need to knit these a lot longer, like lengthwise for the leg rather than the foot, because I always feel like my socks end up quite short in the leg. And if I'm gifting them to somebody, I probably should make them look more like conventional socks. So I'd be really grateful if some of you guys who knit socks for men, like for partners, brothers, or if you are a man who knits socks, let me know how many rows you do for the leg. Uh, I will be probably knitting this on 2.25 millimeter needles if that is at all helpful, but you know, let me know if you use 2.5 millimeter needles or whatever else as well, it's probably helpful. I just find that since they stretch out a lot when you block them and wear them and the leg gets a little bit shorter and a lot wider, I just find that when you're knitting them, it's so hard to know how they're going to look once you've blocked them and also worn them, which is going to stretch them out as well. And so visually, I find it really hard to tell how long that leg needs to be. So yes, please help me. <laughs> I want to make a nice pair of man socks for my dad. Anyway, I think these are going to look so cute. I think I will have to work hard to resist wanting to keep them for myself. It's a really pretty color combination. I think that's everything. That was a lot of yarn, um, a lot of knitting. I will hopefully be back soon with another video. As I said, I've taken a bunch of annual leave and I'm going back to Suffolk to see my family and just over the whole Christmas period. And I don't know if I'm going to have my PC with me, so I don't know how editing videos will go. We'll see, I'll try to keep regular uploads for you guys. Maybe you'll get to see some that are filmed back in my very beautiful living room at my family home. Anyway, I'll be back again soon. I'm on an uploading streak, so I'll try and maintain that. Thank you very much for watching. And oh, thank you, by the way, for, is it 25,000 subscribers? 
yeah, I have 25,000 subscribers. That's really cool. I think this is about to actually overtake my last YouTube channel, which is fun. Although it still has a long way to go before passing my like overall most subscribers I've ever had on a YouTube channel, which I think was like 130K on the channel I had when I was in my early teens. We'll see if we ever make it that far. Goodbye.